What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you how to create architectural renders in Lumion 10 in 15 minutes. Let's get started. In this video, I will show you how to quickly add context to your design by using OpenStreetMap and the new photo matching tool which helps you place your model in a real world environment. This is super useful when clients want to imagine a project in the actual location. For our scene, we will be using the house included in the new example scene in Lumion 10. After you open the scene, go to the Imported Models category and click the Place button to open the Imported Models library. Now you can see all of the models that were imported into the scene, and they are ready for you to use. Now click here to go back to the main menu and let's create a new project. For this video, I will use the plain template. Before we import the model, let's go to the Landscape tab and click on the Open Street Map button. Now click here to turn it on. Then click this button to select an area around our design. We can't see the whole area, so let's use the WASD keys to move around, and use the Q and E keys to move up and down, and zoom out until we can see the whole area. To move faster, you can hold Shift, and if you hold Space 2, then it will move even faster. Now you can move around the map by dragging the left mouse, or zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. Next, you can click on a spot on the map to choose it. Alternatively, you can search for an area to use as a target location. I will use this location in the Netherlands. I will also put this address in the description box below the video so you can copy and paste it to follow along. Then you can set the range with this slider here. And you can choose whether you want to import the height map here. Then just click here to start downloading. You can see that the model now has these buildings and streets obtained from the OpenStreetMap database, which is an open source project where people can add their own content. Now let's look at some OpenStreetMap settings. Here you can choose some style presets to change the appearance of the OSM. These options let you turn on and off certain parts of the area such as water, earth, land use, buildings, and roads. Some buildings have accurate height dimension, while some others don't have any height information. In that case, you can use a slider to adjust the heights of the buildings that did not have a height specified for them. And you can also randomize the building heights with the slider. Since we will be adding our own design to the scene, we need to hide some buildings at our target location. To do that, click on the eye icon. Now click on the building that you want to hide, then click OK, and our building has disappeared. To quickly move to this position, you can double click the right mouse button. Now we can go to the Objects tab, then go to the Imported Models library and place our building here. When placing the model, you can hold down the R key to rotate. That looks good. We can always adjust the position after we placed it. We can also adjust the rotation some more so we can use the slider. Holding Shift will let you do it more precisely. Or you can double click and type in a specific value, then press enter. Now let's start editing the materials by going to the materials tab in the bottom left section of the user interface. Let's move closer to this area here and click on this surface to make changes to its material. To edit this material, we can first make it a standard material. Now you can adjust the additional properties of the material such as adding a normal map using this button here. You can also adjust the bumpiness of the normal map with this relief slider. There are also other settings such as colorization. Using this will help you see the bumps easier too. Next, we can adjust the gloss and reflectivity. Finally, there's a scale slider to adjust the size of your texture. Instead of editing materials, you can replace the imported materials with Lumia materials. Now just repeat this process for any material that you want to edit. There we go, our model is starting to look really good. Now let's populate the surroundings of our project by adding some objects. When adding trees, try to use real photos at the project's location as reference, so you can place trees in similar position. However, to save ourselves some time, we don't have to be too accurate, let's just use the single placement and mass placement tool to add a couple of trees around the building. I'll also use one of the fine detail nature objects. You can add some people in front of the house too. Once we are happy with how our scene looks, let's start creating some images. To do that, click here to go to the photo mode. First, 
Let's find a good position for our image. You can also change the focal length with this slider here. Alternatively, you can double click, backspace, and type in a specific number. Once you've found a good position, you can save it by clicking on the store camera button. There we go. Now let's test render this image to see how it looks. As you can see, the image quality is slightly better than what we saw in the build mode. To improve the quality even further, we can click here to add a style. Here you will see a collection of styles that we can use. For this scene, let's use the realistic style. A style is essentially a stack of effects that is optimized for quick use. But the cool thing is that you can always make changes to the existing effects. Or add new ones if you like. Let's add a real scale effect and adjust the position of the sun like so. We can also change the background image here. If you've noticed, Lumion will render our photo whenever we hover the mouse over the preview window. This is possible because of a new feature in Lumion 10 called High Quality Preview. You can turn it on and off by going to the settings and click on this icon here. I really like this feature, so I will leave it on because it really helps us know what it will look like when it's rendered. Now let's render the scene again and compare it to our previous render. As you can see, with some quick work, our render is already so much better. I will zoom out and create another view where I can see more of the OpenStreetMap environment. When creating a new view, instead of adding effects from scratch, you can go back to the previous view and click this menu, edit, and copy the effects. Then go to the new view and paste it. That's a super quick way to transfer effects. In Lumion 10, there's another way to create context around your design, which is to use the new photo matching feature. To do that, let's create another image. Now we can click on the FX button to add an effect. In the camera category, click on photo matching to add it to the effect stack. Now we can click on the pencil icon to start editing this effect. First, you will see an example is already loaded. If you click here on the load example option, you can see that Lumion included several other examples that we can try and learn from as well as tutorials down here. These examples are optimized to show you how to use the photo matching tool in different scenarios. If you're planning to create an aerial render, then try the from above one and two examples. The inner corner examples are good for interior, while the outer corner examples are good for exterior. But in this case, we'll be using a custom photo so I can click here. Now we can load in a photo that we want to use. You can go to the link in the description box to download this photo and follow along. Now that we've loaded the photo, let's take a look at these objects. Here you can see a cube, which is meant to be used as a reference so we can get a sense of how a model will look compared to the photo. And here you can see four different lines, two for the x-axis and two for the z-axis. You can drag each point of these lines to align it to the perspective lines in your photo. I will use this building here as a reference to align my x and y axes. When adjusting these points, you can hold shift to precisely set the position. Alternatively, you can pull the lines out a lot longer. This will give you even more control over the angle of the perspective lines. You can also try different reference objects down here, such as boxes and planes. Or you can click here to turn it off. Next, click on this button to start placing a reference point in our model. Let's place it at this corner of the building, then click back when we're done. When the model is loaded, it will be at 50% transparency by default, so we can increase that to 100%. The model looks a little too big for the photo, so we can use the scale slider to adjust it to fit the photo. As you can see, the model is loaded, but you can see that some parts of our scene is blocking the house. So I will go back to the build mode and hide some objects in the scene. An easy way to do that is by using layers. While in the objects tab, click here to choose all categories. Now we can press Ctrl and drag the left mouse button to select all objects in the scene that we want to hide. We don't want to hide the house, so let's hold Ctrl and left click it to deselect the house. Now let's use the drop down menu and move them to layer 2. Then we can hover at the top of the screen and click on the eye icon on layer 2 to hide it. As for the open stream map environment, we need to go to the landscape tab and turn it off using this button. Now let's go back to the photo mode and continue to edit our photo matching image. Again, I can change the size of the model with this slider here. Then I can use the orientation slider to rotate the model around the reference point. I can also use the reference point to move the position of the model. Just repeat this process until you have the model at the position that you want. 
When adjusting, you can hold Shift and drag the slider to adjust it more precisely. Once you are happy with the photo match, we can click here to go back. Now let's add some effects to the image so that the lighting of the model can match the lighting on the photo better. First, let's add a real sky effect. Now we can adjust the heading to change the direction of the light. In the photo, the lighting condition seems to be an overcast day. So let's choose one of the overcast backgrounds. It's a little too dark. Changing the brightness here is not very effective. So we can add the exposure effect instead and increase it to make it brighter. Next, let's add the skylight effect, which helps disperse the light from the sky onto the scene so that the lighting is more realistic. The default setting is good enough, so just leave it as it is. Let's also add the hyper light effect, which helps simulate radiosity and increases the light bounces in the scene. I will also leave this at the default settings. Now let's add the shadow effect and adjust the omni shadow and the brightness so that there's more shadows in our scene, especially in the interior. Finally, let's add the color correction effect. First, we can decrease the limit high so that the white parts in our model will look brighter. I also use the temperature and tint slider to adjust the model's color to match the background photo better. Now let's render it. That looks good. Here you can see the house in the background image is showing up right behind our building. To hide that, let's go to the build mode and add a tree right behind our house. There we go, that looks better. Now I can repeat this process for my render, especially for parts like here and here that doesn't blend too well with the background image. As you can see, the cool thing about this feature is that you can always add Lumion objects to make the render look even better. When adding trees and plants, you can also adjust the color of the leaves here to make it blend better with your background photo. And that's how you can create architectural renders in Lumion 10 in 15 minutes. With the help of the OpenStream app and the new photo matching tool, we can easily create context around our design to help clients are matching a project in the real world location. In the example scene, there are some example images of photo matching that you can learn from. Even though there are some limitations to the new photo matching feature, if you use the output and do some more compositing in post-production software like Photoshop, the final results can look amazing. Anyway, if you like this video, then check out my other two videos in the series. In one of them, I cover a new 5-step system to render super fast, and in the other video, I cover a more in-depth workflow to show you what can be done when you have more time for rendering. That's all for today, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment below and let me know what you think of Lumion 10. Stay inspired, guys, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>